Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions. And thank you again so much for our time together. It's a beautiful Monday morning. There will be no APEC this week. There will be no closed roads this week. There will be no stop and go this week. Oh, it's just back to our normal school and normal traffic. And I think we'll all be very, very happy for it. But I do think we should all salute our government a little bit. I mean, after the Paris bombings, we have to understand the government had to be especially strict. We did not need any trouble here in the middle of all these world business leaders here that will release a lot of economic prosperity into our country. Our government did an awesome job. I know we were all frustrated with traffic, but let's get over that a little bit, okay? And recognize the government, the military, the police. And when you see how the police were sleeping on the sidewalks and sacrificed so much to do their jobs night after night after night, I think we all need to give them a good salute, a good pat on the back. The government did a great job last week, especially after the Paris attacks with ISIS. My goodness, our government did a great job. So. Rather than get upset about the traffic, let's move on past that a little bit and salute our government and be thankful. Right now, I want us to come back to the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 today. When I was a young man, I did not believe. I believed in false prophets. I knew they were out there, but I thought that they were scarce. I thought there weren't very many of them. But the longer I've served God, and I started preaching when I was 18 and now I'm 59, so I've been preaching over 40 years. The longer I've served God, the more I realize there's a lot more false prophets out there than I would have ever wanted to imagine. And there's a lot of guys that start good that go false. Corrupted trees, as Jesus would say. A tree that became bad. A tree that became corrupted. But it's not too difficult to recognize these people. There are some things that you need to look for. Beginning in chapter 2, verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord that brought them. Now notice, secretly introducing. One of the things you have to learn about false prophets and false teachers, they have a public face and they have a private face. They have public teaching and they have private teaching. Now, now, this is something we fail to recognize. We, we think that a false teacher says everything false all the time. No, the, the public statements they make are going to be really, really good. I mean, these guys are good performers, but they're going to secretly introduce destructive heresies. There's a public face and a private face. There's public doctrine, and then there's private doctrine. And the way you recognize the false prophets is you begin to see what are they secretly introducing? What are the, the secret teachings that they do in private? What, are, what does the inner core really believe? I'll never forget sitting down listening to some young men that came from a, a new church movement that was coming out of the West. And they, didn't, they no longer believed in a literal physical resurrection of Jesus. They no longer believed in a, a literal uh, substitutionary atonement of Christ, that Christ died to take the punishment for our sins. And they, they sat there among themselves and they were talking and they said, you know, you just you can talk about the resurrection, just, you know, in your mind, you think this, but your words, people can interpret your words depending on their belief. Uh, so you've got your public doctrines and you have your private doctrines. You have your public teaching and then you have your private teaching. Now when you begin to listen to people that have two different sets of truth, one for public, one for private, you begin to recognize that you have a problem. Now take it a step farther into verse 2. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Now notice didn't say many will follow their weird doctrines. It said many will follow their shameful ways. So we have a public face, we have a private face, we have a public set of doctrines, we have a private set of doctrines, but then we also have a lifestyle. A lifestyle that is sinful. A lifestyle of shameful ways. Now when you begin to see people that don't live right, when you begin to see preachers that are drinking and clubbing and going to the casinos and doing all these kinds of things, and they're on their third husband or fourth husband or fifth wife or whatever. When you begin to see these things, and you begin to recognize there are people, they may not follow their doctrines, but they follow their lifestyles. They use their lifestyles as an excuse to validate their own wrong decisions. They're following the shameful ways. So look at lifestyle, look for private doctrines, and look for private faces, 
begin to recognize false prophets have two faces, but one lifestyle.